Good morning, folks. It's May 23rd. It's about 7.35 in the morning. I'm back up on the upper end of Lake of the Ozark. I'm gonna do something today that I don't uh, have a lot of experience with, but I'm just gonna uh, experiment and uh, see if we can catch a few crappie today. I'm gonna long line some jigs. Uh, I'm gonna have an eighth ounce of weight on each rod. Some rods I have just a single one eighth ounce jig head with a plastic body. And on others I have two one sixteenth ounce jig heads with, with plastics. And I'm just gonna throw them out looking at some of the uh, dive uh, uh, charts, uh, the precision dive chart. If you're going about 0.75 miles an hour with an eighth ounce jig, it should take you down to about 20 feet. Now that's with six pound line. I'm running eight pound line. Why? Because that's what I had on these reels when I pulled them out yesterday uh, to get set up to come. So with eight pound line, it's not gonna get down uh, as deep. And in fact, I th I'd like to target that 15 to 18 foot range so we'll uh, adjust the speed the faster you go the higher those jigs will rise up in the water column the slower you go of course the deeper they'll get so um, I was here yesterday caught some fish on a crankbait uh, mainly with bandit 300 so those were running down there around 18 to 20 feet deep so I'm gonna see if I can get my jigs uh, down that deep see if we can catch a few on the jigs now, I'm in a different spot than I was yesterday so uh, We'll see what we can do. Stay with me. Okay, so I'll show you my setup. This is just a single 1 8 ounce uh, jig head, a Bobby Garland stroller, bait, uh, purple and chartreuse, orange head on the jig. And I'm just gonna cast these out as far as I can cast them again. Just like with my crankbaits, it's the same setup. I'll put this rod on the inside. Next bait, this is a double, uh, two sixteenth ounce. These are Grenada Lake tackle jig heads with little uh, spinners on them, uh, blades on them. That's a love bug color Bobby Garland uh, stroller again. And uh, in fact, I think I've got uh, strollers on everything except one, but it's just a double, it's a double jig setup. I don't know if you can see that very well. Maybe better back here. I've got the jigs about, what, a foot and a half apart. I'm gonna do the same thing. Just cast it out as far as I can. This is just a single 1 8 ounce pink and chartreuse stroller. This one's a pink and black, one eighth ounce head, orange. Now this one's a double, uh, this got a pink head, uh, Grenada Lake Tackle with a, uh, this is called a blue ice color. Again, this is a double 16th rig. And then finally, I've got a, a double 
pink 1 16th ounce rig with the Grenada Lake tackle jigs and uh, that's a Southern Pro white and chartreuse uh, curly tail. My uh, my rod I'm using today is a B&M Bucks uh, Ultimate Super Stiff. You've seen me use this rod on my uh, uh, crankbait videos with spinning gear. This is the same setup. My B&M Pro 100 uh, spinning reel. And again, I've got 8-pound uh, Vicious Line High Viz. Oh, there's... Looks like a fish. Well, that didn't take long. Man, just got them out. Come on up, man. Huh? Another one. Yeah, boy, this might be all right. I might have to do more of this. They keep biting like that. All right. Yeah, that's on the Southern Pro. Chartreuse and white. Double 16th ounce. Not a very big fish. Probably a nine inch fish. But I'm not going to keep it. See what we have here. Another little bitty one. That's on the that's a little black crappie. It's on the double jig rig with the blue ice color. That blue ice and this uh, chartreuse and yellow are probably my two favorite uh, plastics uh, colors. Or among, uh, I should say, among my favorite plastic colors on this lake. And again, like I always do with my crankbaits, I just cast these out to the side as far as I can and rotate the rods so that I'm always casting out to the side and not across or over my lines. Right now I'm going right between 0.7 and 0.8 miles per hour. So according to the dive curve, like I say, with six pound line, those should be down about 20 feet. I've got eight pound line, so they won't be running that deep. We'll just experiment today. I'll increase my speed, decrease it. We'll just see what, what we've got to do to trigger a bite. Got it. That feels like a little better fish. I'm in that other line. Cross that line too, or is that another fish? There's a fish out here. Yep, okay, this is gonna be a deal. Yeah, there's a that'll keep. That'll keep. Let's see what's on this up. Where, which one was it? This one, I think. I need to pay more attention. Oh, there he goes. Thank you. That was another one on that chartreuse and white southern pro. Get back to this fish. Boy, he ate it too.
There you go. It's a keeper. Not a very big keeper, but a keeper. I sped up a little bit. I felt like uh, I was in 18 feet of water. I'm still in 18 feet of water, and I felt like I was uh, dragging the bottom, uh, which would be about right according to the dive curve. So I've sped up to uh, 0.9 miles per hour. It's raised those baits up a little bit. I started getting more bites. Well, what a beautiful day. There is no wind. The rain finally moved out this morning as I was leaving to come here. And uh, it's a beautiful day right now. That sun's out. It's about 65 degrees air temperature. The water temperature is 69.9. So it's a little warmer here than I was yesterday. I'm only a couple of miles from where I was yesterday pulling crankbaits, but, and I don't know what the cause of the increase in the water temperature, whether it's just location or if it's just warmed up a little bit overnight. But it's, uh, it was a little cooler than this yesterday, the water temperature. There we go. Oh yeah, that feels like a little better fish. Finally. One beside it too, just, no, I've got that line, I think. No, I don't either. There we go. That's another keeper fish. That's on the old blue ice. You see that? Pink head. Not a great big fish. But I got a buddy back at the campground that said, bring me some eaters. I don't care how big they are. So, that fish is actually 10 inches long. So, Jesse, I'm bringing you some. There's another one on that outside. Yeah, that'll keep too. Southern Pro. Okay, I'm, I'm convinced I'm going to start changing out some of these that hadn't had a bite on them. Oh man, I don't know. Is that nine inches? Yeah, nine and a half. Whew. I'm just not going to do it. I just can't. Just can't do it. Okay, so that again, like my crankbait rods, I got colored tape on the ends of each of these. So that blue is that Southern Pro. It's been a good one. And that yellow is that blue ice that we've caught some fish on. Change your out now to the old Southern Pro that is catching the dickens out of them. That and the blue ice. Blue ice. Man, how many of these nine and a half inch fish can you catch? I ought to be keeping them. I'd have a quick limit of eaters, but I'd like to get something a little better. I don't know if you can see how those lines, that sun's right in our eyes, but how those lines will kind of track as I make my turn. Keep their separation if you take a good, wide, slow turn. Be glad to get turned and get that sun out of my eyes. And kind of speed up to keep those baits up. And 
and maybe we'll pick up a fish in the process. Well, that one feels better. That's crappie. Yeah, nice crappie. Yes, sir. Oh, man, that's a dandy. Too big to lift, really. Oh, yeah, look at that one, folks. Of course, I'm going to run into something. Oh, dandy there. That's on the old pink and chartreuse. Look at that fish. That's a good one there. Let's see. Yeah, that fish is 14 inches long. Nice. That fish was just on that single one eighth ounce orange head with that uh, pink and chartreuse stroller. Boy, we are just catching a ton of these little bitty fish. We're going to have to make a move. Find us some better fish somewhere. I'm going to troll out to the mouth of this and we're going to pick up and go somewhere else. Guess I ought to get this one off too. Catching these things two and three at a time. Not what I'm interested in. Came through a little school there. Got three rods bouncing. Four rods bouncing. Never one of them I better this size. Yep, we're going to pull up, go somewhere else. All right, we're going to, I'm going to pull these in and I'm going to make a move. We're in the midst of a bunch of little bitty fish. I don't know if you can see that, but I put these rods in these rod holders with that reel down between the things like that and you can run down the lake as fast as you want and they'll be secure okay i've made a move i came back to the back of a, another long cove it's only 10 feet deep here so i've increased my speed up to about 1.3 to keep these baits up a little higher until we get into some deeper water Oh man, what we got there? Is that a fish or we hung up? I'd say we're hung up. Yep. No. Oh, we got something that's going to eat every line. It's going to cross every line. It's a stick or something. Whatever it is. I want it off. Is it a fish? Surely not. It's not even fighting. Yeah, now it is. Yeah, it's fish. All right, a big old catfish, I imagine. 
Big catfish, I imagine. Her drum. It's not spinning around like a catfish. Come on, fish. I'd like to see it. Now that it's come this far. But it's a big old drum. Oh, look at that rod. Oh, come on, baby. It's big. Whatever it is. Big for my little jig rig. Damn, my arm's getting tired. Oh, it's getting tired now. Maybe. Wow. Come on, come on, come on. All right, got a glimpse. Oh, big old blue. Big blue. Come here, big blue. This is where you'll pop the line when you grab it. Obviously, I can't boat flip him. I need to get my hand in his mouth. Come on. After all that. I'll quit now. I don't want to get the hook in my hand. There he goes. Couldn't have done that an hour ago. Couldn't get my hand in his mouth. Do I have any crappie by chance? Just by happenstance? We're going to get out of here. Don't like it. I thought if I got over here against this bluff bank, it'd be a little bit deeper, but it's not. I really want to be in that 20 foot of water. I think that's where those fish have backed off to after the spawn. They're just hanging out there chasing shad. It's too shallow in here. I'm in 11 feet of water. So, let's move. All right, we've made a move. We got all set up again. I'm out here over 23 feet of water. I seem to see more fish and more bait out here in this deeper water, right out in the middle of these coves. I'm gonna go uh, about 0.7 to 0.8, which I think is putting these baits down about 12 feet deep, actually. Oh, back there getting baits. I got a fish on. How long's that one been on? Oh, which way do I need to go? Yeah, that's a decent crappie there. Yeah, there we go. There we go. It's on the old pink and chartreuse, a one eighth ounce head. Boat coming by, waves, gunshots. Well, I'm not doing very good here. I'm finally getting into some fish and I'm not paying attention. That's another decent fish. Yes, sir. Nice fish. Which lines he over? I messed around, not paying attention. I got him all hung up here. There he's clear. Oh yeah, good fish. 
It's on the old double love bug. See that? Double love bug. Nice fish. Yeah, maybe we're going to start getting into some a little better fish here now. I was actually up there getting some more one eighth ounce jig heads. I thought I'd uh, go to double one eighths and get down a little deeper or be able to go a little faster. This going point seven is killing me. But if they're going to bite it, I'll just keep going. I can be patient as long as they're eating my little jig. Just going about 0.9. That's why I like trolling crankbaits, frankly, because I can go faster, cover more water. If I'd put two eighth ounce on instead of one, I could go a lot faster and run them at the same depth, or I can get them down deeper. Maybe I need to turn my back on them and go back up there. That's when they bite. Oh, there's fish on. I'm sitting here trying to rig up another rod. Oh, that feels like a better fish there if that's a crappie. Yeah, I believe it is. Yep. Yeah, that's a decent fish there. That's on the old purple and chartreuse. Purple and chartreuse, nice little fish. Okay, folks, I'm having some trolling motor issues here. I don't know what it is. They won't uh, won't maintain a constant speed. It keeps kicking on and off. I'm gonna have to go to my repair man and have a little discussion about what's happening here, but. It's quarter till 10, I've got some things to do, so I'm gonna call it a day. We didn't, we didn't just whack them, we caught a lot of fish, but boy, a whole lot of little ones, I don't know. I think uh, if I had it to do over, I would, uh, to begin with, I'd go to six pound line instead of eight, so it'd get down a little deeper. I think I'd run a little heavier than one eighth, eighth total weight, uh, maybe an eighth and a 16 on my double rigs, maybe, uh, uh, two eights together uh, but I think I'd try it so I could move a little faster too I'm a little impatient and this going at 0 0.7 0 0.8 uh, is not really my cup of tea so I'd get heavier weight so I could go at a faster speed but that's sort of the basics if I the, a lot of people long line they put long rods out lay them flat on the side and they'll stagger the length and pull them behind I'm doing this so you can try and see the rod tips, but uh, it's easy and it's fun and you can catch a few fish. But uh, thanks for being with me. If you enjoyed the video, I hope you'll subscribe, hit the like button and share this video if you would please. This late the Ozarks traffic, everybody's waking up at 10 o'clock. So I'm gonna go home. Thanks for being with me.